Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. Our first story of the day is by PF Ghost. My mother ruined my graduation party. This happened a few years ago, but I was browsing Reddit and thinking about my mom, so I thought I would post it. The story's about me, female, 18 at the time, my dad, and my mom. They've been divorced for a long time. My senior year, I was taking dual courses in college, so I was not that excited about my high school graduation. My dad and stepmom decided that they were going to throw me a small graduation party to celebrate me. It was very small, only my grandma and siblings were invited. It was more like a barbecue, but I had no idea it was happening because they wanted to surprise me. My father reached out to my mother and told her that they were going to have a small thing for me and that she was welcome to come. My mother became outraged that I did not call and personally invite her. She called me one night and screamed at me for a solid hour. Here's part of the conversation. I say, hey mom, what's up? Why did you not invite me to your party? I say, what party? Your graduation party? Don't act like you don't know. I say, I'm not having a graduation party. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you lie to me. I know you're having a party and I want to know why you hate me so much. This is your graduation. I should be there. I say, mom, seriously, all I know about it is the ceremony and as far as I know, you've already been given an invitation. Fine. I won't come, but I just want you to know I care about you and it hurts to know you don't care about me. I was upset and went to go talk to my dad about it. He said that he was sorry, but my stepmom and him were planning a surprise party. He invited her to be nice, but didn't think she would react like that. So it wasn't a surprise anymore, but I was happy for the thought. A few days later was the graduation ceremony. After the ceremony, I met up with everyone up front for pictures in my cap and gown. My mom had purposefully dragged mascara down her cheek to make it look like she had been sobbing. I know it was on purpose because not only does she have waterproof mascara, but her makeup was perfect despite the amount running down her face. We took pictures and she refused to smile in any of my pictures. She made sure that every picture she was in she frowned as hard as she could and scrunched up her face. She looked like a toddler having a tantrum. She decided not to go to the party afterwards. She did, however, call me every 20 minutes to express how left out of my life she felt. It was not a large party, it was fun, and I have many smiling pictures of my dad and me. The very end of this story is the spirit I like to hear. Despite this mom hamming it up, putting on that fake mascara, trying to call you every 20 minutes and ruin everything for you, OP still focused on the fun and things, still focused on the people who truly cared, who weren't trying to ruin things for them and just had a good time. If you were having a party like this and some relative was trying to basically ruin it for you calling every 20 minutes, how many times would you actually pick up that call before you just start ghosting them? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Little Miss Bunny Woman. Karen and his kids decide my land is theirs whenever they want. The nice weather is in and the Karens are coming out. So my house sits in a big plot of land. It's 900 meters wide and stretches back 1200 meters long back into a forested area. I have the front of my property fenced off with a large gate to the main driveway and a smaller wooden wire farm style fence stretching down the width of my property that faces the road. The width has a similar small fence until it hits the forested area. Most of the forest is sugar maple that I take full advantage of and harvest maple sugar. And in my backyard, I have several game traps set up, a large dugout area for a vegetable garden. Well, today I was playing some games and I hear shouting and screaming coming from my backyard. Also, I want to note, I have no trespassing signs posted all over my property all around the border. Well, I go outside and see what's going on, and sure enough, there's three kids in my backyard taking shots with a slingshot on cans propped up against my large shed near my garden. Well, I go out and tell them it's time to go. It's private property, they're going to damage my shed, and it's a really bad place to play. There's a park not too far from my house. About an hour later, I get a knock at my door from their father. That man had nothing nice to say. I had no right to tell his kids to leave, that it's all public land if they can access it, they can use it. Again, I have a fence around my property with no trespassing signs. Also at my front gate, I have an intercom. 
this guy jumped my fence instead of using the intercom to witch me out. I know because on my camera I can clearly see his car parked. The guy had been standing there yelling for several minutes. I only opened my main wood door a little to see him, so there was a glass door separating us. I told the guy to leave, that he and his goblins were very lucky that my dog was not out. He's a guard dog. The guy just told me to shut my witch face up, that I'm a liar POS, and that he and his kids will use the property anytime they want. So I just decided to show him why it's a bad, bad idea to come on my property. I opened my big wooden door so he can see my 160 pound King Shepherd X Maremma sitting there growling, looking super pissed off. Well, he decided to leave, call me a witch and flip me off, but I don't think he'll come back anytime soon. I don't know where in the world this is going down, but I do still kind of fear for the dog. If this is taking place in the US, everybody knows what people can acquire fairly easily in the US that even a dog can't stop. I would definitely be calling the cops even in that situation where they came up to the door. Any chance you see them trespassing, I would suggest straight to the authorities. Especially if they're repeat offenders. If you have evidence and reports of one time, two time, three time, it adds up quickly. Our next story is by Warrior White. Karen insults my wedding ring to my face. Backstory. When I first met the man who became my husband, we were not well off. He moved across the country to come live with me and had not a penny to his name. He proposed to me without a ring, which I was perfectly okay with. It was incredibly romantic. He popped the question spontaneously and is still one of the happiest days of my life. He promised when he was better off financially, he would buy any ring that I wanted. A while after our engagement, the day came where he surprised me by taking me to a jewelry store. He had saved a $5,000 budget plus a little wiggle room for some credit if needed. He told me to go nuts. It was so fun and romantic. I tried on dozens of rings, diamonds, platinum bands, lesser gemstones, etc. Then I saw a set of steel slash titanium rings. They were originally designed for the grooms, not for the brides. But I had never been a big diamond fan and I preferred simple flat rings to mounted stones. I ended up falling in love with a super simple black titanium ring with angled grooves. It was gorgeous. It was exactly what I wanted. And best of all, they were cheap, like less than $200. Husband liked them too, so much that we got him a matching band. We decided to use them as both the engagement ring and the actual wedding ring. We had to special order them as the jewelry store didn't stock our sizes on hand. I got a surprise when they arrived to find that husband had requested engraving on the inside of mine. It said, My Precious. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I love that ring to death. I wear it to this day and it still makes me smile. The Story This took place seven years after I got married. I worked at a chain sandwich shop where we assembled the sandwiches in front of the customer. My store was next to a yoga studio, CrossFit training, and plastic surgeon's office. So we got our fair share of Karens and holier-than-thou rich people. It wasn't uncommon for somebody to drive up in a $100,000 sports car, toting a Prada bag, and sunglasses that cost more than my rent. They almost always came in to order the most picky-slash-complicated subs, then complained about the price. We were quite used to those kinds of people. But this lady took the cake. Enter the entitled Karen and her bratty teenage daughter. They looked the part to a T. They proceeded to order the usual complicated slash picky subs, asking tons of questions about the nutritional info of every item. To assemble the food, we wear clear plastic food service gloves. Because my ring is flush to my hand and won't rip the gloves, I had approval from the manager to wear it at work. While assembling this woman's sandwich, her teenage daughter notices my ring. The entitled daughter says, Oh, that's cute. Is that a promise ring? I say, no, that's my wedding ring. The Karen scoffing loudly, are you serious? I say, yes, it's both my engagement and wedding ring. It has been for several years. Karen looked me dead in the eyes and said, you have a cheap husband. I balked at her comment, but tried to remain professional. That may be your opinion, ma'am, but I happen to like this ring. I picked it out myself. Then you have terrible taste in jewelry. She then turned to her daughter. 
If your father had given me a ring that ugly, I would have left him on the spot. Make sure your future husband gets you a ring that at least has diamonds in it. I was floored. I usually get tons of compliments about my ring. I never expected someone to insult it, let alone straight to my face. I was so flabbergasted I couldn't even continue working on our food. I excused myself and went into the back and told my coworker to finish them up for me. I couldn't even stand to be around them. When I told my manager the whole story, he almost didn't believe me. We had to watch the security footage to prove it had actually happened. Never saw that entitled woman again. Glad she didn't come back. I still shake with rage every time I recount the story. I still have that ring in my hand today, and it's still the most beautiful, wonderful ring I could ever hope for. I love my husband very much. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me, and that matters far more than any jewelry. It's the classic phrase, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. What is amazingly beautiful to one person might be horrendously ugly to another. And if something is horrendously ugly or something you personally think is less than satisfactory as far as a beauty standard goes, you should learn to keep it to yourself. This was definitely some basic person that felt, if it doesn't have diamonds, it's not worth anything, acting like they assume that's a universal rule. Maybe around the people they hang out with it is, I don't know. And our final story of the day is also by Warrior White. Mother lets kids steal wedding decorations off my car. A little backstory, my significant other and I got married on Halloween. We went all out with the themed wedding. Costumes, pumpkins, skulls, cobwebs, chains, the works. Even our getaway car was decorated Halloween style. It was lovingly decorated by my maid of honor. It had the classic just married painted on the back window, covered in orange and black crepe paper and plastic spiders. One extra touch she added was two rubber bats, one black groom and one white bride hanging from my back bumper. They hung in a way they kind of flew like tiny kites or flags when we drove fast. It was hilariously cute. After the wedding, we cleaned the car, but the bats were just too funny and cute so I left them attached. A few months after the wedding, I was sitting in my car during a lunch break reading a good book. My job shared the parking lot with many other businesses, so the lot was kind of busy. I mostly just ignored anyone walking by my car and focus on my book. Then I hear something that got my attention. Mommy, look, aren't those cool? This entitled mother says, yes, those are very cool. Why don't you grab one? I hear a loud popping sound from behind my car where the voices were coming from. I look up into my rear view mirror and see Entitled Mother and her hex spawn standing directly behind my car, holding the little white bride bat in her grubby hands. They had pried it off my car and were walking away with it. I jumped out of my car. Um, excuse me? Entitled Mother looked startled. She hadn't realized I was sitting in the car to witness the theft. Can I have my bat back, please? I hold out my hand expectantly. The entitled kid tried holding the bat behind her back and scurried behind her mother. The entitled mother feigning innocence. What bat? The one your kid just stole off my car? Entitled mother realizing she can't pull off innocent, so she switches to full entitlement mode. No, it belongs to my daughter now. You have two. You keep the black one. She can have this one. I say, uh, heck no, that's part of my wedding decorations. I'd really like to keep both of them. You stole that, give it back. The entitled mother says, well, if you didn't want to lose it, you shouldn't have left it sitting there. Only things inside the car are yours. Stuff outside is fair game. You lost this one, deal with it. I say, lady, it was attached to my car. Last I heard, that still counts as my property. That makes what you're doing theft. Give it back now. The entitled kid whiny crying, Mommy, you said I could have it. The entitled mother says, Yes, you get to keep it, sweetheart. This girl doesn't know what she's talking about. Finders keepers, right? She looks at me with a smug grin. Jesus, lady, what are you, five? Just give me my god darn bat. The entitled mother says, No. She spins around and scoops up her kid and begins rapidly hustling away, her crotch monsters flapping my bat in the air yelling, Finders keepers! I chase them for a bit, but give up after a few yards. 
I had left my car door open and didn't want to get my car looted or stolen while off on a wild witch hunt. I decided to just let the little monster keep my bat. On the way back to my car, I detached my one remaining bat from my bumper. I stashed that one in my glove box, just in case Karen decided she needed a companion for her precious angel's new toy. Honestly, if she had asked politely, I might have just given her the kid the bat. They were cute, but I wasn't overly attached to them. It was just a cheap white plastic bat. But the fact she just came up and ripped it off my car put me into full oh heck no mode. I mean, who does that? What's next? Mommy, can I have those balls hanging under that truck? SMH. I think the thing that upsets me the most about this story is the fact that they're going to enjoy that thing for a day tops, and then they're just going to toss it in the landfill. That kid's not going to enjoy some plastic bat for more than a day, especially in this era of iPads and smartphones and whatnot, which, based off of how this mother sounds, is probably the type of parent to just hand them the iPad anytime they can. It just upsets me, man. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.